Hi, I'm Alex from Wilkins and Cameras and today I'm going to be talking about the OM System OM5. OM System's second camera release is the new OM5. This is a super compact and lightweight camera and part of the Micro Four Thirds system that both Olympus or OM System and Panasonic Lumix are known for. It's a 20 megapixel mirrorless camera which sits in between the OM1 and EM10 and is aimed at enthusiast photographers and adventurers alike. I personally think it's a great little vlogging option as well. A little reminder on who OM System are as the brand continues its transition from Olympus. OM System is the new brand for Olympus cameras and lenses and you'll see that the latest cameras and lenses now carry the OM System branding. You'll notice I do interchangeably use the brands throughout this video as there's a lot of Olympus legacy out there but strictly speaking, this is an OM system camera. The OM5 follows on from the Olympus OM-D EM5 Mark III, and I for one, I'm glad that it has a much shorter and easier to say name. I'm going to be completely honest, right from the very start of this video, if you were hoping for a dramatic new release from this product, then you're going to be disappointed. In fact, the reality is that the existing Mark III users aren't going to see much of a reason to upgrade, but Mark II or EM10 users may well want to consider this as a camera to upgrade to. There's been a stack of improvements on the previous model and there's lots of great features which make it worthy of consideration, particularly if you want a very small and very lightweight camera which you can take absolutely everywhere with you. We've recently done a video on the EM10 Mark III S as well, so if you're looking for a small, light and very budget friendly camera without some of the bells and whistles that the OM5 has, then please go and check that out. The OM5 retains the classic styling you'll be familiar with in the EM5 lineup and Olympus cameras in general. Button layouts and lightweight compact design are very similar. Improvements to the previous model include improved image stabilisation, improvements to AF and eye detection modes, enhanced high resolution mode, which you can now do handheld as well as with a tripod. New to this model though, previously seen in the OM1 and EM1X models, is Live ND, now up to 16 stops, and Starry Sky AF modes. New to the video features, we have a vertical video mode, a new OM Log 400 and the addition of a webcam mode. A red frame has been added during recording mode, great for vloggers, and the 29 minute record limit has been lifted as well. This is alongside existing features such as 4K 30p and 120 frames per second slow motion in full HD. It benefits from a new image processor which has enabled some of the new features mentioned and improved weatherproofing as well. Our own system have taken the guts of the EM5 Mark III and added improved body image stabilisation, now up to 7.5 stops with, com with a compatible lens, and an improved image processor, TruePic 9. This, combined with the 20 megapixel live MOS sensor, are designed to deliver high image quality with low noise. The camera is, of course, a micro four thirds camera, which is how it retains its extremely compact size and light weight, and this is going to be a major feature of the camera. The 5-axis image stabilisation offers improvements over previous versions, up to 6.5 stops in camera or 7.5 stops with compatible SYNC IS lenses. You can really see how well this works when you're using the camera for both video and stills and it makes using slower shutter speeds or, or longer lenses really easy. This means you can mitigate the need to ramp up your ISO in low light and often means you don't need a tripod bad news for me because I'd really like to sell you a tripod but great news for you. Build quality wise the OM5 is dust proof, splash proof and freeze proof down to minus 10. OM system are one of the few camera brands who actually IP rate their products so we can say confidently that you can get this camera wet. It's got an IP53 rating which probably doesn't mean much to you but the 5 means it's protected against dust ingress so not fully dust proof but you'll be okay for normal usage. And the 3 means it's protected against direct sprays of water up to 60 degrees from vertical, so you're protected even in the most driving rain. It's also freeze proof down to minus 10, so even in the harshest UK winters you should be fine. Although last time I mentioned temperature limits in a video we were then subjected to a 38 degree heat wave. So Hopefully I've not jinxed it and we don't have some sort of unfathomably cold winter now. <laughs> Apologies in advance. I'm renovating a house at the moment, so having a dustproof camera to document my progress is a real blessing. Despite the camera's lightweight, it does feel like a reasonable quality camera when it's in your hand. 
The F4 Pro lens that comes with the kit feels good quality as well. It can be said that sort of some of the non-Pro Olympus lenses do feel a bit too light, maybe a bit plasticky at times, but they serve a purpose and they still perform well. The Pro lens range certainly all feel great quality. The supersonic wave filter, which has been in Olympus cameras for a long time now, is a great little feature which essentially shakes any dust particles off your sensor. It doesn't entirely negate the need for sensor cleaning, but people who are on the go and switching lenses a lot, it means the chance of dust spots is massively reduced. Olympus, a now own system, are of course known for some of their cutting edge features that they refer to as computational photography. These include high res shot, live composite and live ND. Uh, so I've just been trying out the high res shot. Um, there's two versions of this. You can either do it handheld because the IBIS in this camera is so good, or you can do it on a tripod. If you do it on a tripod, I think you can actually get slightly higher resolution images. Um, and high res shot works by uh, pixel shift technology, which you've probably seen in other cameras and has been available in previous cameras. It's available in the OMD EM5 Mark III, EM1X, been in a few Olympus cameras now. It's not new technology to them, uh, but they have brought it forward in this model as well and the improved IBIS means that the handheld version is even better. So I've got some examples of both of those. So a common feature of Olympus cameras is that they have a live ND, so a simulated ND filter, which means hopefully I can take a picture of this waterfall with a slow shutter speed, so it mean that there's lots of movement in the water, we get some nice milky water, but without a neutral density filter on the front which is very clever and I have seen it work before so let's see if I can do it. Live composite is also a type of long exposure photography but with a difference. Again it does what it says on the tin, it's a composite image and it simulates a long exposure. This means that you avoid overexposing a static light source as you would in traditional long exposure but you can still capture the movement. In these examples, you can see that we've painted with light whilst having our marketing sign lit in the background. In comparison, when using a traditional bulb shot mode, the sign gives out too much light and overexposes the image. You can also see that there's a lot of ambient light in the room, which also leads to a brighter image from a long exposure. In live composite, I set the shot to expose how I wanted, and then the series of still images are composited into one, which captures the light painting. I also tried this on a local landmark where there's a lot of light sources around. I wanted to expose the statue nicely without capturing too much of the ambient light and get the car trails. The beauty of Life Composite is that I was able to wait until enough cars had driven past to make the image look how I'd hoped. In a traditional long exposure setting, I'd have had to have waited for the traffic to come before I pressed the shutter. This is something I'd probably like to experiment with a little bit more and I think it would be of particular interest to people getting started in photography or wanting to be a bit more creative with their existing photography. It's actually been around for quite a while now, so you will find this in a number of other OM system or Olympus models. Focus stacking is another feature you'll find in the OM5. This will shoot a set number of photos at a designated focus differential and then merge them into one JPEG file at full resolution. You'll need to experiment a little bit to get it right, but when you do, the results are really good and bring macro subjects into focus from front to back without losing any of the greater depth of field of the image, or to allow you to get the whole subject in focus across the frame, even with a large aperture. This was really easy to set up and worked well. You can shoot up to eight images in one go at different preset focus points, and these can be saved as RAW and JPEG images, depending on your standard settings. The camera then gives you a composite JPEG image of the eight stacked together. I tried this handheld and using a tripod, and it's really clever because it actually does work handheld, but as you'd expect, I did find the images were a little bit better with a tripod. Starry Sky AF is another feature to the OM5, and it removes the difficult task of getting your focus point perfect for nighttime photography. This makes it easy to take Starry Sky pictures that are sharp. Art filters and art filter bracketing, as with previous models from Olympus, there's a selection of art filters. These can be selected in the main menu or using the dedicated art filter mode on the mode dial. If you're not sure which one to choose, you can set the bracketing option to choose three at once. I don't think I would personally use these, but they can be fun to experiment with. And again, for new photographers, they can certainly inspire creativity. Well, when you asked me yesterday about HDR photography and I said, Ugh, I hate HDR photography, it's because there's too many bad examples of it. Um, so you can set 
quite a few different options in camera which um, we'll run through but HDR1 is very subtle so that's you probably can't see this but no HDR HDR1 which is just really nice it really nicely balances out all the light which is what it's meant to do and then HDR2 is much more extreme it's the kind of HDR I don't personally like but I think for internal shots like in churches it might actually work really well so yeah I, I'm, I might be a convert in this <laughs> difficult lighting <laughs> the battery life on this camera um, is is not great <laughs> I don't know if maybe we had a dud battery or maybe our sample camera isn't as efficient as a full production model but I'm not used to going out with a camera and running out of battery so quickly if you do plan to venture out for epic adventures with this camera, I would pack a spare battery or two. It uses the BLS50. Uh, hours ran out after only four to five hours of intermittent use and then only two hours use whilst I was on a walk, specifically getting sample stills and video. I've shot all day sports events with other brands and not needed to replace the battery. The supplied charger also takes quite a while to charge the battery fully, so I wouldn't rely on a quick charge in a cafe to get you through the rest of the day either. You can charge in camera via USB, so there is some added versatility here, but this also was quite slow as well. I, I really would be factoring in a spare battery into my costs here. They're around £55 for a genuine uh, Olympus or OM version. There's a single card slot on the side which takes UHS to SD cards. EVF and LCD thoughts. I've not written the script properly there. <laughs> Onto the monitor and EVF. I wasn't expecting a super huge EVF in a camera this size or at this price point, and it is quite small. Again, I'm trying to be honest, I wasn't overly impressed with EVF, but it does have one, which not every camera this size can boast. I like to use a viewfinder, and I found this a little frustrating, although I did get used to it the more I used it. If you're an existing EM5 Mark III user, you're not going to notice any difference. If you're using a Mark II, the EVF on the new OM5 is smaller, but does benefit from being OLED. The rear LCD touchscreen is fully articulated and a reasonable size. It's bright and clear, and a nifty touch is that the EVF is automatically disabled when you have the screen flipped out. This means you won't accidentally wave a strap or a hand in front of the viewfinder and see your screen go blank. The touchscreen is set to focus and take a photo with a press straight out of the box. There's a quick access menu button on the top left of the camera, which gives you access to the most common settings. You need to double tap this uh, in order to start selecting the different options. This means no accidental changing of settings if you've got clumsy fingers, which is a nice feature. If you don't know about this though, you might spend a couple of seconds not understanding why it's being unresponsive. This leads nicely onto the menu as a whole. I have never gotten along with Olympus menu systems. This one was no different. So many things were in places that just didn't seem to make any sense. Submenus within submenus and some features in one place and others in another part of the menu. I found it incredibly frustrating. If you're an Olympus user, you probably very au fait with the system, but if like me, you only sporadically use Olympus cameras, then it's a bit like an Apple user trying to use an Android phone. It just, it just doesn't do what you want it to do. I would get used to it in time, and I did, but I think OM System could do with an overhaul here in the future. Having said that, there are enough buttons on the camera for quick access to exposure compensation, ISO, two dials on the top, quick access to drive modes for continuous shooting, etc., and that quick menu that I've already mentioned, which means you don't have to dive into the main menu too often, um, thankfully. <laughs> OM System claim that the new processor improves low light performance. As you'll see, I had awful light for most of the time that I had this camera. And when I was photographing the cats in the late afternoon and under tree cover, the camera performed surprisingly well. Much better than I was expecting for a camera with a small sensor. And considering I was using an f4 lens most of the time as opposed to a, a, a faster lens, the images retain sharpness, they're crisp, there isn't too much noise, even as the ISO starts creeping up. And I let the camera handle the ISO. And even at high ISO, I was impressed with the results. I wouldn't be at all worried about using this camera in less than ideal lighting situations. I, yeah, it's, it's quite impressive. The OM5 features a 121 point phase detection AF system as found on the EM5 Mark III. There's multiple AF areas to choose from and tracking features. The face and eye detection features have been improved since the Mark III 
and they performed well for both video and stills. I found the menu quite unintuitive to select my desired AF settings, but they are very customizable, so once you have the hang of it, you do stand a good chance of hitting your target, especially when combined with up to 10 frames per second shooting with AF. You can actually shoot 30 frames per second in electronic shutter mode, but only 10 with AF. Another improvement is the ability to choose a face to track or highlight when there is more than one present in the scene. IAF performed really well in both stills and video mode, choosing your focus point or areas was easy to do with the touchscreen. Of course I tested this on my cats, they're much easier to get to cooperate than the local wildlife. The tracking worked really well, there's no animal IAF, but when I set the focus point to them it would continue to track them and keep them in focus. It would also recognise that there was a subject and jump to track it as well. I tested it on some birds too, and I was, I was actually quite impressed. Now, I didn't have a very long lens with me, and the weather was miserable, but you can see that the birds are sharp, and I was really quite impressed with how well the tracking worked on them, despite being very small. The scene is very high contrast, but you can see here, even in a busier scene with more going on, the blackbird has been captured lifting off the ground. The OM5 also features pro capture, this is a feature that's found on the EM1 series, OM1 and the EM5 Mark III as well, and it works by continuously taking images when you half press the shutter, but only saving them in temporary memory. This is great for wildlife, it allows you to capture moments such as birds taking off. Press the shutter fully when the bird takes off and they're saved. The moment is captured, as opposed to randomly firing off bursts of images on the off chance that the bird is about to go and filling up your memory card, or missing the moment entirely. I wasn't able to really test this thanks to the lack of wildlife around this weekend, but I've seen it in other cameras and it's a great feature. On to video, the OM5 is capable of recording 4K 30p with no record limit, cinema 4K 24p and full HD 120 for slow-mo footage. New to this model is OMLog 400 for improved uh, colour grading capabilities in post-production. Vertical video is a nice feature, certainly one that's appreciated as a content creator when we're always having to consider TikTok and Instagram alongside YouTube, etc. The red marker border when recording is great and suggests that Olympus have vloggers in mind for this model too. There's a 3.5mm mic input so you can use an external mic and the image stabilisation is excellent and can be further enhanced with digital stabilisation for incredibly smooth footage when on the move. This is the default setting for video and produced remarkably stable results. The onboard microphone is surprisingly good. OMLog 400 is actually referred to as picture mode in the menu setup. I presume this is to simplify it as it's not a camera aimed at dedicated videographers. As with log mode on other cameras, it gives a flatter profile, retains more dynamic range for easy colour grading post-production. This isn't a videographer's camera by any stretch of the imagination, but it has the basics you require to record your travels or general life and share them beautifully and quickly thanks to mobile connectivity. It's actually a really good camera for vloggers and I was pleasantly surprised by how well the vlogging videos came out for both sound and the quality of the video. I'm doing this test footage just using the onboard mic but there is a 3.5mm jack so you could have much better sound using a dedicated mic which you can get from either Olympus or OM system or you could use an existing accessory that you might have like a Rode mic for example. I loved how small and light this camera was. It made me want to take it out with me more than a full frame camera. I really liked some of the features like the live composite. The image stabilisation was incredibly impressive. OM system are aiming this camera at people who want something small and light but more powerful than a mobile phone that can be taken on every adventure, small enough to pack in a backpack or be carried in your hand all day without being a burden. A camera that can do lots of different types of photography with minimal fuss to enhance your adventures rather than be the focus of them. I think solely aiming this at people who want a lightweight camera for taking on epic adventures is a bit misleading. This is a camera that performs in a range of settings and can be taken everywhere. A camera to document your life, whether that's your house renovation, your pets, your travels, what you get up on, to, on a weekend, big or small. It's discreet enough and versatile enough to be your everyday companion. It will be kitted with a 12-45mm f4 Pro lens and suits being paired with other small but quality f4 lenses as well. 
The body will launch at 11.99 and the kit will be 14.99. If you want an all out hybrid camera for professional content creation, this is not the camera for you. If you're prepared to carry a little bit more kit with you, have no interest in live composite, have other priorities such as a large sensor and the improved depth of field that comes with that, you're going to want to look elsewhere. You're gonna want a different camera. But if you're a reasonable all-rounder that can truly go anywhere that you go, has some really unique features that you won't find in any other brand and is advanced enough to allow you to learn and expand your creative horizons or whether you're an outdoors or travel vlogger or just simply to document your day-to-day -day life, then it's a serious contender. There's not many competitors at this price range currently that are as compact, lightweight, feature rich and have such an extensive range of small, light and affordable lenses. So if they're your priority, this is a great option and entirely worth your consideration. What do you think? Is this what you wanted to see released from Own System? Is it going to accompany you on your next adventure? What do you like? What do you dislike? What do you want to see next? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please check out our other videos. We've got the Heron 1 review from earlier this year. We've recently done the EM10 Mark III S. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, and head over to Instagram and TikTok for additional content there too. Thanks again, and we'll be back very soon with another video.